Hello, my name is Jay Roberson, and I'm a training manager at Turner Industries Group. Today, I'd like to talk to you about chain hoist and ratchet lever hoist safety. Most of this information comes from NCCR module 00101 from CORE and 38102 from basic rigging. To my left is a chain hoist. Commonly referred to as a chain fall, chain hoists are used in many types of industries. Chain hoists and their counterpart, the ratchet lever hoist, are available in many different capacities and they're found on just about every construction site in the world. Although commonly used in many different applications, chain hoist should be used for straight vertical lifts only, just like a crane. They can be damaged and or fail if used for angled lifts or horizontal pulls. Refer to the manufacturer's specifications for more information. The most common type found in construction is the spur gear chain hoist. Because of its portability, durability, and the lack of a need for a power source. In this case, the load chain is operated by the hand chain instead of electricity or compressed air. Because there's no indicator of how much weight is being lifted on the hoist itself, it's imperative to know the weight of the load you are lifting, as well as the capacity of the hoist being used. Now let's talk about the ratchet lever hoist. Often referred to as a come along, it should not be confused with one. There is a difference. A come along uses a cable and can only be used in a horizontal pull. The ratchet lever hoist, however, uses a chain and they're often designed and rated for vertical lifts. Always verify the intended use by referring to the manufacturer's specifications. Now let's talk about inspection. Both the chain hoist and the ratchet lever hoist should be inspected before each use. And since both use chains and hooks, the inspection is much the same for both. Also know that they must be load tested and inspected annually by a certified inspector and should have a tag showing proof of that annual inspection. First, inspect the hooks at each end. I like to start here, because if there's any deformation of this hook, it's likely that the entire system has been overloaded and should be taken out of service until repairs can be made and a complete inspection with load test is conducted. Check the throat for stretching. If the safety latch is not damaged, but opens past the tip of the hook, then the hook has been stretched. Look at the measuring marks. Most manufacturers say that if there's any measurable stretch, then it should be taken out of service. Always refer to those manufacturer's specifications for the measuring points. Check the eye, the body, the saddle for nicks, cracks, gouges, and signs of bending or twisting. Check that the safety latch is present and operates properly. Check each link of the load chain for bending, twisting, cracks, gouging, or signs of heat damage. Check the hand chain for obvious damage. And also check that the braking systems and drive systems worked as they are designed. So now let's talk about some do's and don'ts. Always use the appropriate size shackle in the hooks to attach rigging. Rigging in the hook alone can accidentally be manipulated and become unattached. Use or set up appropriate acre points. Never attach the hook directly to the leading edge of structural steel. The load chain should remain straight at all times. Always use the appropriate rigging hardware and shackles. Never wrap the load chain around the load and back to itself. Although there's a load rating for the tip of a hook, it's never a good work practice to load there. Some manufacturers do not allow it. The load should be in the center of the saddle. That concludes this safety bite from Turner Industries. Remember, work safe, work smart, and live to work another day.